Hi, welcome to the Black Show, Make Money and Make a Difference. Today, I'm so honored we have an awesome guest, Madeline Skla, and she is an outstanding Twitter marketing expert. I will share her bio just in a few minutes with you. A little bit about housekeeping. Normally, the show is between 30 minutes and 45 minutes, all depending on how live our conversation is. And sometimes you just don't want to stop. So please stay with us. And if you have any questions, if we have the chance to answer them in and between, then we will. And if not, just type them in the chat bar with backslash Q, capital Q. And I will read them for her and she will see it and she will answer it. If you don't have the chance to ask your question now, I will um, share with you how you can connect with Madeline after the show. And if you hear a little meow in the background, that's my little princess Snow White. And she wanted to join her mama today and she didn't want to be with her siblings. So that's that's where it's coming from. It could be she jumps into the, the, the picture too and back and forth. but. It's just all positive energy, right, Madeline? That's right. <laughs> hey, my dog likes to do that too. He feels left out and who knows, he may uh, want to jump on too. Right. I believe if you're on Heart Centered Entrepreneur, this gives you whatever you love to do, gives you energy. So for for me, it's it's high vibrations, what really brings us forward. And that's, that's what's important to me. So let's get started. Um, Madeline Skra is a social media coach and consultant helping countless entrepreneurs, startups, and businesses of all sizes do one thing very well, work smarter, not harder, <laughs> I, uh, without any questions, absolutely. And I'm learning a lot from you to do that with tools, to do that with strategies, to do that with a plan in place. So that's without a question. With 20 years of online marketing experience, Madeline's eagerness to share her knowledge Make sure one of the most in demand speakers at conferences, discussion panels, and college courses. She saw the potential to use the internet to connect others together. So in 1996, she founded GoGirlsMusic.com, an online community of female musicians. And today, it still goes strong with its mission to empower women in music. Sounds amazing. And I knew a little bit about that because you have a music chat too, right? Yes, I have a Twitter chat been running the last four and a half years called GG Chat, short for Go Girls Music. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. I adore you for the Twitter chats. It's I'm just a participant and it's tough for me to, to hold the speed and understand the questions and answer. So I really adore how you do it and so much wisdom you share with us. So that's really amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I do a lot. I'm trying to actually tone it down after 20 years. It's like, you know, I do a lot. I need to like try to kind of hone in on just a few things instead of trying to do 20. Mm -hmm. Just focus better. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if I have ADHD or something because I, I take on a lot. I do a lot, uh, but I am good at staying focused. So maybe not some, I feel like I'm kind of ADHD, ADD just like in certain ways of like, I take on a lot and I'm not real focused, but then when I actually do the work, I'm very focused. Yeah, I think it's just when you have so much potential, it's difficult to not pay attention to it. That's that's what I see. It, it just, and it's also with, with, if you're heart-centered and you're perhaps spiritual and you really want to make a difference, right? Because there's so much what you can do. It's really not easy to stay focused. That's That's what I see too. Absolutely. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Hey, I just I, realized I didn't have my computer glasses on. Now I can see you so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Hey, my first question, I, I'm pretty sure many are interested in that. How did you start your business? Why did you start your business? Oh, wow. What a great question. So, you know, I've been an online marketer for 20 years. Um, I, I, I really started on a whim. What a lot of people don't realize is I started off being a web designer. I was one, actually one of the very first web designers here in Houston where I live. And um, it was such a different time back then, you know, early 1996, um, most people didn't know what a dot com was. So mm -hmm. 
I, I kind of stumbled into it. I was learning HTML. I really got hooked on the internet in 1995. I was married back then and my then techie husband showed me and I was like hooked. I was like, okay, I'm all over this. I, I want to learn everything I can about the internet and how to best use it. And I wanted to learn how to create my own web pages. So I learned HTML. And what happened was uh, a realtor I had worked with I remember he he heard I was doing this and he said, I don't know what this dot com thing is, but I know I need one for my business. And like light bulb went off. I'm like, you know what? I could do this as a business. So uh, this entrepreneurial spirit kicked in that I didn't know I had. And uh, <laughs> I started this business. That's I mean, I literally started it just on a whim, no funding, just something I just did. And I remember my... My uh, then husband said, well, you know, if you can, you know, cover all of your expenses and, and make that work, you know, go for it. And so, and I did, I mean, I was able to make really good money doing that. Um, and I just continuously grew it and grew it over the years. And what, what was really cool is at the same time I started Go Girl, Go Girls Music. Um, I've so are you always a been like, a, Do you play been like a hobby. Yeah, I've always been like a hobby musician. So I grew up playing guitar. I started very young. I was 11 years old when I got my first guitar and took lessons. And, uh, and then, you know, growing up, I wanted to be a rock star. I wanted to be the next Joan Jett in high school and all that. You know, I was just this total rocker chick. And, and then I quickly realized, like, okay, what are the odds of becoming a rock star? It's pretty, pretty much zero. So um, I always had a love for the music business and musicians. And I always figured one day I would help musicians. And so when I was learning HTML and learning how to do websites and I decided to start my web design business, I thought, well, I need a separate web page so that when I learned code, when I like, you know, back then, like code was you, you saw a web page, they did something cool. And uh, Jennifer's here from Jennifer design. She's a web designer. She'll get a kick out of this. Her. Back in the olden days, you right click view source to see the code. Like back then code was very simple. And so when somebody did something cool, you just, everybody copied each other. That's how you learn. And so I thought, well, I need a website where I can play with new code and have fun with it. So I thought I would start Go Girls Music just for fun to start a community. But back then building a community is not like what it is today. Back then, you had a static web page and you had email. That's all you had. So I had a page like, you know, hey, musicians, um, tell me your stories. And they would email me and then I would take that information and put it on the website. And that was the most I could do. But I was slowly building this community. And uh, it was just an amazing time. Like, I just look back on that now and go, wow, like, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I, I, you'll appreciate this, Degmar. Like, like, today, like, I would totally like have a business plan and be like, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. Back then I'm like, I just did it. I just, I don't know how I did it. I just did it because my attitude is, as my new tattoo. Let's see if you just, do, just it. do it. Just do it. Cause that's how I've always been. Do you know what? Let me just interrupt you. Do you know Michael Singer? Michael Singer? Uh-huh. He, he is here in Gainesville in Florida. He's like in the 70s or 80s, right? And he wrote this book, um, The Surrender Experiment. And I just read it. And it speaks about what you just said. And you say you just did it. But I'm pretty sure you had the little voice in your mind perhaps saying, should I do it? And is the best way to do it? And you just did it because you followed your heart or you followed your spirit, right? Yeah. And he says... And that's what, what I'm practicing right now a little bit. He says, go with the flow, go with life. Like your story sounds amazing. It, it, it sounds like everything felt in place for you, right? Where in reality, you just said yes to where others perhaps would be concerned and others would be perhaps scared and others would hold back and stay safe. So right. that is really, and that's why I interrupted you. That is really, I think it's so important. If you want to make an impact, you cannot be scared. And if you want to make money, you cannot be scared, right? Right, right, exactly. And and you know what? And I, I, I love 
telling this as a story to show that that it is a, exactly what you're saying that um i'm not afraid to fail and the reason why is because i have failed in business and i think <laughs> that is so important for people to go through most people don't go through that i failed very early on i'm an idea person i came up with what i thought was an awesome idea to put webcams in daycare centers you know, and it was mostly for my own need. I wanted to be able to like go online and see what my kid was doing in, in daycare. Um, but it was too ahead of its time. I mean, we're talking, this was back in the nineties and people weren't ready for this. And so it failed miserably. And, uh, it was a big wake up call. Like it's okay to pursue your dreams. So like, what is the worst thing that will happen? The worst thing that happened was not a big deal. Life right. goes on, but it and taught me that it it's okay. And, oh, and yeah. I mean, you know, times, times yeah, have changed, you know. Do you mean, and yeah. the thing is, and perhaps it wasn't as important to you as other things. So I think the, I think life can be as hard as we make it and can be as easy as we make it. And I'm for sure not saying that easily, right? Life is tough without a question, yeah. but there's no need to make it tougher. Right. So, so right. Yeah, but you didn't share with us, and that's really why I originally why I wanted to ask you: How did you get to Twitter? Why did well, you okay, Twitter? so so I fell in love with Twitter when it came out. Um, you know, I I pay close attention to what goes on at South by Southwest Interactive every year, and uh, so that would have been 2008. Um, I think people were getting on in 2007 already, some of the techies, but in 2008, what was going on is that South by Southwest interactive. It was like what everybody was talking about was Twitter. And I thought, okay, I need to go sign up and see what this is all about. And I fell in love with it because of the, you know, the, the short form, 140 characters. I like that. I like that. You gotta be short to the point, <laughs> concise. Awesome. It is tough for a lot of people, but I liked it and I embraced it. So I was hooked. I was hooked. And um, over the years, I found that so many people did not understand it. They didn't like it. They were you know, always asking people, you know, what do you think of Twitter? And most people don't get it. And so I, I just got on this mission to start teaching everybody like how to properly use it so that it can help their business and help them get discovered and can help them um, get known in their industry. Like, you know, when you look at thought leaders and the industry leaders, you know, so many times a thought leader is somebody who has built up a big audience on Twitter and everybody's listening to them. So, so using a platform to build your audience. Yes. So what would you say what is the biggest impact you make and everybody else can make with Twitter? Because that's, I'm really curious about, because I'm a student, I'm still learning and I want to figure this out. Yeah, the best thing is to just be yourself, be transparent, be real, and just get on there and talk to people. So many times people, I, I watch them on Twitter, especially when they're new and they get on there and they don't get it. They just push, 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 right? They just mm -hmm. um, put out so Automated much information. Tweet. Yeah, and a lot of automated tweets, but they're not listening and they're not engaging. And when I'm teaching my Twitter classes or doing some one-on-one -on -one training, I always say, look, get on Twitter and listen. Just spend some time listening to the conversation and then find an opportunity to jump in and be a part of the conversation. But don't just sit here and just like buy my product, do this. You know, like I'm sure you get this too, Dagmar. You know, you look at your do your DM feed, your direct messages on Twitter. And most of it is automated, automated, yeah, Everything automated, is automated. DM. except when you yeah, text and, me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And it's because of Crowdfire, you know, Crowdfire is a great app to help you unfollow followers that are not following you back, but they have this service that allows you to do auto DMs. And it's terrible because so many times somebody will auto DM me when, if I follow them, I immediately get this DM saying, Hey, thanks for following me. Now come follow me on LinkedIn. And I'm thinking, I don't know you. and I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And, and I'll, and I just going to hit delete. You know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's build relationships. I'm not going, if I don't know you, Dagmar, and you got on Twitter and you said, Madeline, come follow me on LinkedIn because I'd rather be on LinkedIn. That's where I connect with people. I'm going to be like, I don't know you. Why would whatever. I go do that? Hey, whatever. But you know what, what is so interesting, and this is just my observation, right? I'm not a Twitter expert, I, I don't know, but 
because we are so overwhelmed with these with the the selling thing right so now when i get direct messages i assume they're all automated no matter how well they are written because some are very well written and they could be personal but now i'm so over these direct messages i don't care anymore and i know it's not good but it's it creates such a negative energy to look at this and just think then they are really not interested in me they really i follow them they just want to sell me something let me opt in let me go somewhere else but they really don't care and i think that's yeah. what it comes down to what you just said like it sounds so simple it sounds so simple when you say connect with these people and you know what my clients when when they start their social media and they just give me a response back how their seo is working everything then they say oh social media is so much work and i wish i just could automate everything and i really don't want to deal with them and i really don't want to do it and i believe this negative energy people can feel it so then let it i think i think let it go because it will not bring you the results in any way so true yeah so what would you say makes Twitter so different and what you do in Twitter makes it so different than Facebook or Google Plus or LinkedIn? Google what? No, I'm joking. Google Plus, I, you know, it's like, who uses that anymore? You know, I, I use it I for SEO, it's great. Do you? Yeah, it seems like, you know, certain marketers and SEO experts love using it. And I get that. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, you're gonna it's definitely get the- It's like you want yeah. to have, you. I like to put my eggs in different baskets and I don't use Google Plus for engagement, right? I use it to put out the plural, makes it searchable. That's very smart. You know, you should uh, be uh, teaching people far and wide about that because there's a lot of value in using it for that, for the SEO purpose. And I don't really hear too many people talking about that. People just shut out as, um, uh, Google Plus like, not interested. It's another Facebook. I don't need to get on another Facebook. But you know what? The, the thing is with that, and I don't want to go away from our Twitter topic. The thing is with that impact, right? If I can get an eight second number one ranking just by creating a Google Plus post and nobody else of my competitor does it, and this normally eight seconds stays for eight hours or eight days, I'm doing it. And I can sure. automate this in Hootsuite or in Buffer. It doesn't cost me anything, but it, it helps my website and it helps like visibility too. But let's come back to Twitter because I didn't love Twitter honestly before I met you. I thought, oh, I don't get Twitter. I just don't understand how I can get this engagement without wasting time or spending too much time or getting yeah. connected with the wrong people, right? And I see the right. impact you make and everybody loves you. So what do you make so different than anybody else? Um, because I spend a lot of time on there and I cultivate relationships on there. But you know, your question before about, you know, really what makes it so special and, and makes it different from the others. If you were to contact me on Facebook and mm -hmm. I don't know you, you're gonna have a really hard time connecting with me because you know, you got like, you know, how we, we mostly use Facebook for friends and family, right? So it can be really hard for a stranger to come on. When people send me friend requests, if I don't know them or if I don't see enough of a good mutual connection, mutual friend connection, then, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not going to follow them. Um, but on Twitter, you can connect with me so much more easily because we see this as what we say, the cocktail party. We, we look at Twitter as the cocktail party. So you're like, hey, Madeline, I'm Dagmar and I, you know, like what you're doing. Let's chat. You know, that works on Twitter. It doesn't work on Facebook. Doesn't work so much on Google+. Plus. Um, a lot of these other networks is so hard to get that kind of connection. And as you know, you come on Twitter chats. Twitter chats are the best way to connect with people. If there's an industry leader you want to connect with and they're on a Twitter chat, you'll be able to connect with them very easily. You just can't do that on other social media sites. Yeah. And what you just said, it, it amazed me. I experienced that. Like, I think last week I, t I um, tweeted something because I'm trying sugar free, right? And it's hard for me. 
So I just tweeted it, and I didn't want to tweet something dumb or without quality or without a value, but it, it's something like what is what is hard for me, but I thought perhaps others, they experience this too. So Vakun from India, right, who comes to your Twitter chat, so uh -huh. he, he responded back to the tweet and said, oh yeah, I wish I could do it too. I really want to do it too. And then another friend came in. And so we had this Twitter conversation about sugar-free and then we, we spoke about vegan. And then we spoke about the impact this does just by stop eating sugar or becoming vegan. And yeah, you're totally right. I could never have this conversation on Facebook with strangers because none of the strangers would see my tweet. So it's Facebook is for me, I only use it for really more my social aspect, but Twitter is a beautiful, for me, it's a beautiful combination of business, my spirituality, what I want to do good in the world and people accept me. I feel people accept me how, how I am where in Facebook, they just will unlike me if I post something they disagree with. Right, exactly. And you're making such a good point when you're talking about Twitter chat and how you had like this side conversation. Mm -hmm. I have made amazing conversation or amazing uh, connections with fellow colleagues on Twitter chats where we would have side conversations like that. And it's okay to, you know, I don't know if some people think, oh, I can't do that on a Twitter chat where basically you're on a Twitter chat, but while you're on the Twitter chat, you and a few other people start having a little conversation about something else like what you're talking about, but you still put the hashtag in. So you're still part of the big picture, but you're having this little side thing. And I've made amazing connections with people that I've actually become really good friends with, like Adele DeMeyer, who, you know, co-hosts with me here on Blab, yeah. which will be later today at six o'clock Eastern. We, we host our little uh, weekly Twitter tips Blab. I met her on, on a Twitter chat and doing these little side conversations can be an amazing way to connect with people so I, I love that you told that story that's really cool oh it's it it's amazing to me and i know she's in australia right like yeah, how else australia. could you could you meet her except on a conference exactly. you would never meet exactly. her on facebook or in google plus and have this right exactly exactly somebody like her where you know she's in australia and um i i i remember it was media chat which is a really popular twitter chat on uh thursday evenings and she was there and i i remember looking at her twitter profile like when i see somebody that grabs my attention i click and go look at their profile and she has this beautiful pro you know big picture on her header image and she she really wows you she's so pretty yeah, she and does. it's like she does. who is this girl i must get to know her and so we started conversing on these twitter chats and got to know her and um, she's a great person I love your chat together because it's very interesting. You both have totally different personalities, totally different Twitter experiences and knowledge and everything. And then there comes this part where you have the same wave and you, you finish each other's sentences. And it's, it's just fun being there. It's not just educational. It's so fun being there. And then also I feel like I'm part of a community. And I think that's what I feel in Twitter the most. And I don't feel that in any other network yeah twitter really to me is more community oriented and so many people that are newbies that don't really understand it i think they have a hard time trying to understand how is twitter a community because they come on there and they're they're not sure how to properly tweet how to go connect and i'm always telling people go to twitter chats so like if you want to learn how to use twitter and connect with people you will when you're on a twitter chat because you have no choice but to you know, keep up right. with everybody and learn to tweet fast and on your toes. And then in the process, you you know, people will stand out to you that you connect with. Right. But anyway, let me just stop you here, right? Because you are the first Twitter expert who told me that. I never heard about Twitter chats before. And I'm not new to online marketing. I do this since several years, right? And I work with, with coaches before, business coaches where mm -hmm. they, they just say, our oh, social media is easy. You just do automated posts and you just schedule a post on Twitter every hour and you do quotes. So you, you do RSS feeds from other Twitter experts and you do direct messages and you just buy. You just buy your Twitter followers and then you have 5,000, you have 10,000, 15,000, looks great. 
doesn't matter if you tweet every hour, nobody retweets, nobody comments, nobody loves the thing, it just looks good. And that's, it's just, and let's come to the question to how do you make money? How do you make money? And how do you make money on Twitter? Because everything what I did before, I did not make money. And now with your guidance, I get invitations to other club shows. I got invitations for, for speaking uh, engagements. I got invitations to go guest blogging, which I didn't get before. And that's for me, like, I don't know where you see where the money is in Twitter, but that's for me money because in a middle term, I can create leads. They can, everybody who's listening to, to the speeches, they can opt in in my um, irresistible offer or they can become my client. So this is really where for me money is. And Twitter is for me so much easier to monetize my activity as any other network. But now I'm, I'm curious about you. Make, make me smart. Well, well, okay. So the advice you were saying you were getting from coaches in the past was terrible advice. And a lot of people uh -huh follow that and it is yep. not the, w the way to monetize because they're basically giving you a very one-sided way of twitter which is just push out a lot of information um but they're not telling you the most important thing which is to listen and engage because yep. it, you know i can sit here and push out stuff all day long and i'm always looking for great articles and information and push it out but that's not going to get me business. It's not going to help me monetize. It's not going to really do much because you've got to connect with people. So the, the, what I'm doing by, by, you know, doing a lot of tweets, a lot of information, I'm casting that wide net out there to draw people into me. Now, once I draw them into me the, now, and this is not what they taught you. Now it's my job to engage and connect with them and turn it into something that could become business right? So buying followers, the worst thing anybody can do, that's not going to help either. Because the other thing too is you can sit here and share all this information, do the RSS feed, get all kinds of um, good information to show you as the expert. Look at me. I, I share lots of valuable information. When you have a lot of fake followers, like you're saying before, nobody's liking, nobody's retweeting. So you're not getting the engagement. So it's almost like you're a ghost on there. Like you're there, but you're not there. So yeah, yeah. to me, that's a waste of time and energy because you'll get zero out of it. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I just, what you said, a ghost, right? It, you really, you really fake something. So now as when I heard from the coaches and I did it because I didn't know better, right? I felt right. like a faker. And what, what you said about the information, I heard Mark Shaper speaking about, he wrote this book, uh, The Content Code. And I love it because he says, and I know you will agree with me, we go away from information sharing. There's so much information out there. There's an information overload. But really, if the, an expert doesn't come from reading a book or studying something. An expert comes from implementing this. Or what you said, failing with it, tweaking it, testing it again implementing again that's what the internet is is every day is a change and it's not a change because it's bad it's something because it's evolving and i think that's that's an awesome opportunity especially on twitter absolutely and you're so right with that you know figure out what works you know all of us are different what works for me not might not work for you and vice versa so twitter is like always you know, an evolution, you know, as, as you know, it changes all the time. All these social networks change. They go through their, you know, what are they doing next? And, you know, the big thing over the weekend was they're going to make these big changes with how we, we see our newsfeed from chronological to an algorithm and everybody's up in arms. Oh my God, this is terrible. And it's all in how you look at it and how you work with that. Right. And right. that's like a whole other conversation, which I think we're going to talk about in our Adele and I in our blab later today. So you, you ought to come check that out. Cause I'm sure we're going to dig into that because, Oh, that's going to take a while to discuss, but going back to what you're asking about monetizing and again, it's different for everybody, but what, what I do is I'm all about relationship building because what I know is that the relationships I build on Twitter, can help lead to business. So, um, and actually with Jennifer being here, we'll use her as an example. Um, okay. I'm trying to remember how, you know, Jennifer, if you remember exactly, you know, type it in the box here, but 
but uh, sure, would love for her to, uh, because her and I connected on Twitter and uh, I had asked her like, hey, you know, I, I need some help with my website and I'm kind of looking at web designers and, you know, maybe she's a good fit bit for me. So we were talking mm -hmm. about that uh, recently and it all started with her and I connecting on Twitter. And so it's always about that connection. Now, will every connection lead to business? No, of course not. Should you always be on that lookout of like everything has to be about business? No, because that's, I don't think that's a good way to do it. You know, being authentic, being transparent is how you draw people in. Um, all of my followers are totally organic. I mean, I've, I've built up this large following just by being wow. out there, being accessible, um, being authentic, just being myself. But I do spend a lot of time on Twitter and I do spend a lot of time, you know, being very visible. Um, I, I tell people, if you want to really get seen and heard on Twitter, try to go, and you're good with this, Dagmar, try to be on two or three Twitter chats at least every week consistently. And I even wrote a blog post about this, that when you're consistent on, on these Twitter chats, you're like Norm from Cheers, where everybody knows your name. You know, it's like, it's a great feeling to come on a chat and, hey, Madeline, Madeline's here. Like, yeah. when my, my, my Twitter, I have a Twitter course called Tweeting for Profits, which is exactly what we're talking about, monetizing Twitter. And um, on one of the sessions, I wanted to take the class and have them be on um, a live Twitter chat with me. And it was great because influencer chat happened to be live during the class. And so I said, watch this. I'm just going to come on here and say, hey, everybody, how are you doing? And I said, just watch how many people respond to this one tweet. And, uh, and then we just watched like, all. Hey, Madeline's here. Oh my gosh. You know, it was like, because I to? consistently, I, well, I don't think so, but I consistently go on there and I'm visible on there. So when you're, I mean, you can be a, a superstar or not a superstar. If you're visible and you're consistent on a Twitter chat, when you show up, you're like, Hey everybody, I'm here. You're going to get people saying, Oh my gosh, look who's here. You know, that that's just going to happen yeah. because you know, people get to know you and like you and they appreciate you. Yeah. And you know what I do now, because I'm, I'm not creative, I'm totally logical. So I don't have your potential in this way. And Kim's mom, Kim Schiffler, Kim's mom said to me, it's good for me to do Madeline's Twitter chat because it will open up my creativity and take away my perfectionism. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do now, because it's still fast, so I'm looking for your questions. I would wish they would have a better way to see the questions. So I'm looking for your questions, answering your questions as good as I can after thinking through it. And then I go back afterwards. I go back in Twitter and see what everybody else uh, posted. And then I yeah. start liking it and retweeting it because I don't have the ability to do this in the hour. It just it goes so fast. And I love it because, you know what, Samurash, I'm in the Samurash chat and what they do, they take the best answers and they create a blog post with it. And then they share it back on Twitter, referencing this blog post and they show you tweets. It's amazing. So now whenever they do this, your name comes up again and again for this blog and for the Samurash chat. So it's it just the, the Twitter potential amazed me, but you really introduced me to that. And it really started, I honestly, I started with the Twitter chat because if not, I would still do the automated posts, direct messages, and just questioning myself, right? Which is very frustrating, questioning myself. Right. If all these coaches tell me I should do this and they say they are successful, what is wrong with me that I'm not successful? And I guarantee why can't you they're I not, not making make money. Impact? Well, but they're not making money so. with that, that strategy because that's not it. a real strategy. That, that's not a strategy that works at all. So I can guarantee you they're not making money from that strategy. Um, so, well, I, I do. I now do a recap on, on the Twitter Smarter Chat, which I think is great for, for a chat because you can go back and see like what you're saying, see some of the top tweets. Um, I think it's smart that you go back later and, and spend time liking and tweeting and connecting with people because it is hard. It is challenging during a chat when they move so fast to try to see everything. I can't yeah. see everything. I, I can't. I, so I have to do the same thing. I have to go back later. Let me ask you this. What platform are you, when you're 
participating, what are you using? Hootsuite, using Twitter.com, using TweetChat. What do you use when you're on there during a live chat? No, uh, not TweetChat, the other one, the TCIO. TweetChat.io. I would recommend you do TweetChat because when you say, I'm looking for the questions, I don't want to miss it. In TweetChat.com, when when you do the question, so is the, the Q1, Q2, it will be actually be highlighted in yellow so you can't miss it, which is very, very oh, okay. smart. And so, it, you know, when you told me that, you know, you want to make sure you don't miss the question, that's the best platform to not, because you will not miss it. You'll see. And even and if it's going too fast and I just kind of scroll through, like if I, wait a minute, everybody's already answering question number. Everybody's going, you know, A2. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, where's question two? Because yesterday I was on, you know, uh, Lucy uh, Rindler Kaplan now runs the content chat on uh, Mondays. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was yesterday afternoon. And, you know, that's a very fast moving chat also. Mm -hmm. And, um, so yeah, that happened yesterday. I'm like, wait a minute, they're already answering question number what? I'm like, wait, where? So I had to scroll through to find and see that highlight in yellow so I could see what was the question I missed. So um, it's a great way to do that. That's interesting. So, so I would recommend that. Just the, that's the question it has something to do with Twitter, but not so much with our blab. Is there a way how I can see all chats in like? Is there something where you can see whatever chats are, Twitter chats are existing? Yeah, there are some directories out there. Unfortunately, there's not like, oh, one directory that's the directory. You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, what I usually do is I just go to Google and I just type in Twitter chat and, and find a listing. There's a couple of resources in there that have like a directory listing. That sh that's what you're talking about, right? That shows all the mm -hmm. different chats. Um, yeah. because Twitter chats have been around for the last, you know, four or five years now, um, some of these listings are not the most current. Um, so it's been more like a word of mouth kind of thing for me, like hearing from other people. Um, I should go create like a little calendar of like all the different yeah, ones that I participate in. I was in. looking for, and it's then that, you want know, the other challenge what I have when I follow your advice and I do exactly what you say, right? With you, awesome. I know when, when we have it and at what time it is. So I know the day and I know the time. With the other ones, I tell you more than once, I had to look through everything to, and then I had to figure it out and count it in my head. Okay, they said they just started a few minutes ago. So what time is it? What day is it? And then make myself a note because it's not obvious. So it's not so easy to follow them, not only to find them, but then to figure out when is the chat. It's, it's hard to find them. I just posted a link for for one of the resources. I'm trying to find, there's a couple Not of perfect. them. I don't, I don't see, I'll have to go digging around and find them all, but this is one of them. Tweetreports.com has a pretty good schedule. Um, what I pretty much have found is that you know, I'm looking for the ones with marketers and social media managers and people like that. And so it's been kind of the word of mouth or seeing what my friends, what chats are they getting on? So that's how I've been discovering the ones that I get on, which is, you know, you got the, um, the, uh, the social chat and media yeah. chat and influence. You know, they, they all have chat in them. I love it. You know, influencer chat. Then you got mine, Twitter smarter. It doesn't have a and, chat uh, in it. But uh, it's perfect because if you want to promote it, you can say Twitter smarter chat with the other one exactly. challenging from a German perspective because then you, you duplicate the chat. So then it sounds funny. Yeah, it does. Exactly. I thought about that too. It's like, okay, mine is just right because I can put the word chat in there. Um, but Twitter chats are just so phenomenal for connecting with people. And back to yeah. monetization, um, you know, there there's so many different ways to monetize on Twitter. So I usually you know, tell people, hey, start with the Twitter chat because like we talked about before, you're going to connect with a lot of people. You're going to get your name out there, um, spend time, you know, building relationships. And something that's really important that so many people fail miserably on is having a really great bio. Because what happens is I get on a Twitter chat. People are like, oh, who's this Madeline Sklar? I need to check her out. They click on my, my profile and they read the bio. The bio's good. That can help lead to business. 
if they don't understand what you do, who you are, and what you do, like, you know, I make sure mine says, you know, social media strategist, or maybe I, I think actually mine now says Twitter marketing strategist. And number three, social media power influencer in Houston. That's a big deal. I want everybody to know that's that, hey, I'm apparently a big deal where I live. So that's kind of cool. Um, I want people to know what I do. If you have a Twitter bio that does not really explain who you are, and what you do, you're going to have a hard time monetizing on Twitter. So you got to kind of start you. with the basics. Right. Because you said, because I think now we are, we're at the point where we really, I really would like that our listeners understand how they really can make money and make a difference with Twitter, right? And you just said the Twitter bio there where the money is and um, having a great Twitter bio is important. So for me as a left brainer and logical person, this is not enough details for me, honestly. And I know you texted me, you sent me this private message and you said, um, you update, create update with your Twitter bio. And I looked at it and I thought, not sure, <laughs> not sure what I did better with the other, from the other one, right? Because I read, I read a lot how you should have a Twitter bio and some say, which makes sense from an SEO perspective, have hashtags in it, right? So what people searching for because your bio is searchable. Others say make it personal, make it fun, put your hobbies in, put in what you want to stand for. So is there a formula for making a bio the most impactful and the most money with it? No, there, there's no formula for it. The, the thing is, is that you want people to read it and have a snapshot of who you are and what you do. And yours, yours says that, hey, you, you are an SEO. I'm looking on it right now. But I yeah. love how you started off with personal, you know, love cats, chocolate and crazy. But, but this is so this is actually people should really look at yours. Yours is a perfect way of doing it because you're combining By the accident. personal with, <laughs> but, but you know what? It, it works like, like you do it right because, you know, love cats. I like how you, <laughs> you did the, the equal sign the and the, sign. Uh, the little up arrow to make, make a little cat outline chocolate and crazy about niche and SEO positioning, growing my worldwide authority. And you're using those as hashtags, which is very smart and then make money and a difference in the world. So, so when people see that, they're like, okay, I, I understand Dagmar. I get her. Like, you know, personal is important. Business is important. Like you're, you're combining. People look at mine and probably go, does she not have a personal life? She doesn't mention one personal thing. <laughs> and somebody actually interviewed me and asked me about that recently. They go, Madeline, yours is all business. Like, like, shouldn't you have something personal? And I'm like, Yes, it's good to have something personal. Unfortunately, I do so many things in business, I couldn't even fit all right, my business things space. on there. Right. And you know why I changed mine, right? I went to one of your plops and you spoke about Twitter shouldn't be boring and Twitter should be something alive and Twitter should represent your skills, but also should not be about you. No, how should how should I say that? It should not be how awesome you are. It should be what's important for you and how you can help help others with that. So I changed my Twitter profile more. Making a difference and making money is important for me. Do I want to help others with that? Absolutely, with SEO. Do you mean? But it's not. I don't want that. It's all about me, me, me. Because nobody wants. Nobody cares what we right. say as an expert if we don't care. And if we don't want to help others with this, and this is really what I want, I want to use my ability and my skills and my expertise to make a difference for others too. Like, do I want to create wealth? Absolutely, because the more wealth you have, the more impact you have. But I want exactly. the same for everybody else. So that's really why I changed it. And it, it took me a good hour to change this thing. But isn't that uh, too part of your Twitter for profit? Is, is what about it? The, the profile, reviewing the profile? Well, I, you know, in my beginner's course, I, I really focus on the oh, profile the course. because I, I feel like um, with beginners, they, I think so many beginners like don't get the whole profile at all because so many times people will just have a one liner or something that doesn't have anything to do with what they do in business or, or painting a picture of who they are and what they do. So I focus a lot of time on it 
in my beginner's course, or if I'm working with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, um, I will always go look at their Twitter bio and, and usually end up spending time going over that and discussing how to make it work for them with their business so that, you know, cause everybody wants to monetize. I mean, everybody wants to use these platforms to make money. That's why we all spend so much time on them. You've got to make it work for you and make it so that when people are on there, they, they get it, they understand. And right. you know, you only have 160 characters, so you've got to be concise, but it's got to be well-written. Right. You know what? I just had um, one, I think, really important question. And what I understand, correct me if I understand it wrong, to really make an impact and monetize your efforts, you need a call to action. Um, Absolutely. And I see, I see your little kitty arrived. <laughs> so cute. That's Snow White. Yep. Oh, that's very that's cute. Little kitty very cute. Cabby. I have three, so. They all want to have their own places. So oh. what, what I'm sometimes, right, hesitant about, because I don't want to sound salesy, but I want to have an impact and I want to make money. Should I, Where should I have the call to action? Should I have it as a sticky tweet? Should I have it in my bio? Should I post it once a day? Like, I don't want to annoy, but I'm on Twitter to make money too. Yeah, a call to action is so really important in all of in the big in this process. And when you look at the big picture and, and in my tweeting for profits course, that, I mean, a, a lot of it is mindset and looking at the big picture and then honing in on all these individual things you're doing to help make money in the big picture. And so call to action is so incredibly important. One of the things that I'm I'm teaching and spending a lot more time on now is using using Twitter cards and Twitter cards are a great way so to utilize a call to action. Right? You don't have to pay. See that that's where people don't I get it. Know. They don't because they didn't know exactly. Okay, because here's the thing, and I hate that Twitter does this. Twitter embeds the Twitter cards in the advertising platform on Twitter, and I think that's mm -hmm. a mistake. And so people have. So here's the thing, everybody here right now. I'm sure you'll, your minds will be blown. Did you know you could have a tweet where you could have a call to action and actually ask people to opt into your email list? Did you know you could tweet me. that? Mm -mm. No. You can. Well, you can. So what you say? I saw the buttons. You mean the button? It creates this button. You can actually. You know what? I think I could uh, probably do a real quick tweet right now so you can see it. Is it's pretty amazing. You have to go into Twitter ads. So when you're at Twitter, the top right corner, you got your little pull down menu, and it, one of the items says Twitter ads, and it's actually in there. And I think it's just a terrible place for it to be because people place. assume it's they assume clean. you got to pay for the advertisement. You don't. You can, of course make this an advertisement and pay money, but there's no need to. So I can come in here. I had to go create the card. Um, and there's a learning curve for that. So it's best to have some help. Um, and I do one-on-one -on -one help and I have to also teach it in my class. I'm actually going to do a, a class on just this, on just how to so do this. Let me so let me just ask you something with the Twitter card, right? So the difference between the paid advertising and the free one is with the paid Twitter card, I would have a bigger reach because I pay for the bigger reach. But with the exactly. Twitter card, the free one, I can reach, oops, I can reach my followers. Yeah, it's just a regular tweet. So we just go out. So I'm going to do one right now right. Just to, so you can see as an example. So um, I already have uh, the Twitter card. I've already set it up in advance. So mm -hmm. um, I, I have them in place. So now I just need to, I'm just going to say, I kind of have like a, a thing I always say when I do this. So I'm going to say, the tweet's going to say, uh, learn Twitter tips, hacks, and news through. I have it already written. I have it in my iPhone and my notes because so that way okay. I don't have to. So I can just refer can to have, it. So yeah, I have another question before we end the show for today. Can I ask you that, or do you want to concentrate first? Now give me one minute. I just want to type this. I'm almost <laughs> done, and then uh, I'm going to show you. You'll be able to see this, and then we'll link it. I'm going to put the link in there too, so everybody can see this, and you'll just Perfect. be blown away. Um, uh, I think it's like for a call to action. To have a call to action like this for free for my followers. This is awesome. 
Yeah, and this is a great way to do it. So my tweet's going to say, so I already have the Twitter card set up. Um, it has a nice image on there, and it's going to say sign up now. The beauty is, Dagmar, is that when people see that, when you see this tweet in a minute, I know. you basically will it's, see it, it's going to take your email address yeah. that when you signed up for your Twitter account, whatever email address you have tied to your Twitter, you'll just tap a button. It will automatically send that email address to me. So then I can uh, put you into my email it. list. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tweet. All right. So I tweeted it just now and I'm going to go take the link to this and then post it in here so everybody can see. So, yep, here it is. So if you can so just go to my question. Twitter, but I'm going to, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to put the link right here. So everybody here can just click on this link. So see in the chat room, click on that link. It's going to take you to the tweet. The tweet says, learn Twitter tips, hacks, and news through my Twitter insights newsletter. Serve weekly, sign up today. You'll see the image. Below it, it says sign up now. Below that, it shows your email address. And you just hit the sign up now, and it's going to send Perfect. me the email. And what Perfect. better call to action? Twitter cards are all call to actions, and there's a variety of them. So I definitely go spend time on this, Dagmar, you will be blown away. Oh, I will. Now I will for sure. Hey, question, call to action. And I hear that I hear that differently depending on what I'm listening to, right? What is the best call to action? Is it depending on my business or is it to a blog post? Or is it to an opt-in? Or is it to a $7 product? What is the best call to action for Twitter? Can you say something? generic like this or is it really depending on you know on it all depends it all depends on your business now for for somebody like me this this tweet that i just did is a great call to action because i want to increase my mailing list we all do i think all of us here right now yeah. as business people um our mailing list and i mean first of all for everybody here like if you don't already know this your your email list is gold and and the, while i'm the biggest social media person you will meet I can tell you right now, this tweet I just sent out, not everybody's going to see it. I mean, I know I have a lot of followers. What, what am I up to now? I mean, I, I, was this 42,000 is crazy. Okay. 42,000 people are not going to see that tweet. Maybe I'll be lucky if, I don't know, 500 people or a thousand people will see that. Right. So it's all about right place, right time. Same thing on Facebook. I mean, I'm at the 5,000 mark with, with, Facebook friends, right? If I go and post this on Facebook right now, Hey, sign up for my mailing list. I'll be lucky if I get a couple of signups from that. But, you know, our email list is gold. When we send out an email, we know we're going to reach our audience. I mean, yes, it's not going to always be 100% because you got it going to the spam folders and people that just don't open the emails. We, we you know, I understand that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but the email list is very, very important. So when you now realize Can I just as say I something you, to the email list? Mm -hmm. So sure. I just to confirm, absolutely to confirm what you just said. So I went to a club with uh, where Mike Alton, he interviewed Mark Shaver, right? So Mark Shaver asked Mike Alton what he thinks is the most important uh, button on the social sharing buttons, right? And then Mike responded, now oh, where your target market is. And then Mark Shaver said, no, it's your email button. And he said, they did testings. Can you imagine that? that people use more the email button to share the blog post with their friends as to share it in Facebook or anywhere else. So I'm just to confirm what you said, it's email. I didn't know that it's still a, a gold nugget in 2000. Absolutely. It absolutely is. And a lot of people are just like what you're saying are like, really? I thought social media is yeah. like, well, yeah, uh, social media compliments. When I'm working with a client, I always tell them, at the back of your mind, when you're using social media, not constantly, but back of your mind, always be thinking, how can I use social media to increase my mailing list? So you don't want to tweet it all the time, but every so often tweet to, hey, sign up for my mailing list. I can encourage people to say the same thing on Facebook, on all your social media. Always want to try to increase your mailing list. So now with this little, um, I don't even want to say hack. It's not really a hack. I mean, a don't Twitter card. I don't like is this a, English word. Yeah. I know it sounds like, you know, deceiving. I mean, this is Hector. a great use. Yeah, this is a great use of, of using a Twitter card is actually not terribly difficult for the, I know everybody seems to be blown away in the chat room here talking about it. Oh, um, I'm, I'm going to be, I, as soon as this blob ends, I will do one. 
Well, I, I, you know, it, there's a learning curve. It's not super easy to set up and I'm going to be teaching a class on this, uh, pretty soon. So, um, if, oh, if you're interested, before I waste if you're time. interested, yeah. anybody here is interested, um, just, uh, message me on Twitter, send me a direct message on Twitter and, um, I'll make sure that you're, you're added to a mailing list for this. Um, because uh, Adele and I, the, the, that I'm doing the, uh, that we do our weekly blab here talking about Twitter, her and I are coming up with a class where we're going to be teaching this. And so uh, everybody's interested. You know, what's interesting when I was on viral chat, I was a guest on viral chat, which I think you came on, right? Cause you said mm -hmm. that you hadn't heard yeah. of that one before. Great Twitter chat. And so well, I did active. a little, yes, it's very active. And I did a little test at the end and I did a little tweet like, um, uh, I said, like this tweet, if I don't remember the exact wording, but something like like this tweet, if you'd like to learn how to collect email addresses on Twitter. So basically what I'm showing you guys here with the Twitter card, I had 30, like 33 people like the tweet because they are interested and want to learn. So I've kind of hit something here. People don't know you can do this. They don't realize you can have right. a call to action to collect collect an email address and everybody wants to learn how to do it. So um, this is going to become my new thing now, Dagmar. Right. I'm going to be teaching people how to do no, this. Perfect. So and you know because it's a great way to it's a great way to monetize. I mean, talking oh, about what we're absolutely. talking about today, it's a great way to make money. Because your mailing list happening. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that's like to combine this and um, can you believe it's already an hour? So to, com <laughs> to combine all that, you really need to be fearless. You need to be fearless. You need to be saying yes to opportunities, no matter if you're scared or if you think uh, perhaps it's not working out, like what you said, failing, um, God damn, you fail and then you get up and you, you do it anyway. But I think too, what we all can learn to make, to make money and make a difference, you need an expert. You need somebody on your side guiding you like today with the twitter cards right and thank you for stopping me to doing it later because then i try to do it for an hour two hours three hours and still not right and i'm wasting my time because i i want to do what makes money and makes the difference in my life and this testing this doesn't make sense at all so i appreciate you create the course just to let me get get to the next level higher and that's that's really what i experienced making money and making a difference you need to get faster to your next level to make a bigger impact to make more money and all in a good way because we want to make a difference in the world and that's how we can do it by staying struggled that there's no way how you can make a difference right absolutely so i totally um, agree I still have something to share about you, and I would I really want to sure. do this because I find it's very important. Madeline's the host of the hashtag Twitter Smarter podcast, where she interviews top social media and marketing experts like Pat Flynn, Kim Garst, Mark Schaefer, and Mari Smith, to name a few. She also runs the widely popular hashtag Twitter Smarter Twitter chat every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. It becomes and it is the place to connect, learn, and share Twitter tips. Madeline co-hosts a weekly live video program on Plop, along with Adele DeMeyer, is that how you pronounce her name? Adele DeMeyer, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. It's aptly named hashtag Plop about Twitter, where they share Twitter tips and news. Plop is fast becoming popular as a live video platform, so the pair decided to embrace it and share their vast knowledge. Details at blab period I am backslash Madeline Sclair. And if you click on Madeline's um, hashtag, not hashtag, the uh, handle here. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for <laughs> posting. Madeline can be found on Twitter at Madeline Sclair and through her website, MadelineSclair.com. So Madeline, last question. Do you have something special to share with us? Something special, like like any kind of certain way? Like you special, to... special for making a difference and making money? Um, you know, really just being yourself, being authentic, which is what I've been talking about pretty much all along here in this hour. It goes such a long way. You know, I don't know. Are you familiar with Pat Flynn from Smart Passive yeah. Income? I'm a big fan of his. Actually, he was my first uh, person I interviewed for my podcast, yeah, which yeah. was 
Awesome. I was listening to a podcast interview. Uh, let me find it on my phone. It's really good. I definitely recommend everybody check this out. Um, the podcast is called Freedom Fast Lane, and they interviewed Pat. Um, there's this episode, it's a Q and A is from uh, January 27th. It says a uh, Q and A with Pat Flynn and it's phenomenal. I mean, just the things he talks about, but Pat is one of those people where it's always about being authentic first, you know, being authentic and transparent first. And then everything, you know, comes from that. And I firmly believe that too. Like, like I've always been that way. I don't know how to not be that way. I mean, I built this large community of people through my go girls music, website that I started 20 years ago, just from being me, just from being authentic and being myself. So I really think that is the best way. I know that's not going to always bring in dollars. Um, and a lot of people want dollars right now. Like everybody wants to fast track to everything and it takes time. You know, you can't just snap your fingers and be the industry expert tomorrow. Doesn't work that way. It takes time. So I just think that if you just, you know, know where it is you want to go, stay on track and just keep being real, keep being authentic, um, you'll get there. And that's that's how I've always been. It works well for me. But you know what you just said, and I don't disagree, but what I experienced, right, people start a business with no money, no plan, and they have the pressure that they need to make money immediately or they feel like they're just making it. So when they come to SEO, I have the same, right? Or when they come to social media on Twitter, their full focus is really, I need to make money, I need to make money, I need to make money. And people can feel this, like it's negative energy, it's very limiting energy. And so more somebody feels this, so more people will not follow them, will not supporting them, or they fake it for a while. But then when you look deeper, and you and I, we spoke about this several times because there are so many experts out there. And first, it sounds great. And then you look deeper and there's just hot air. Like there's nothing behind it. And I think just to be realistic, Making money and making a difference requires a strategy, requires like your Twitter for profit or the, the Twitter cards, right? Can I waste a lot of time by trying to do it on my own without knowing that I do it? Yeah, and I did it with coaches and I believed them and I saw the results and I saw I didn't get any results. So I just, just let it go with them as that. But it's really to make money and make a difference, you need somebody who's already there who can guide you to get around the pitfalls and just go faster and, and really fully live the life you're supposed to be, right? Yes, definitely. And you know what's really good? Just to get a mentor. I mm -hmm. think having a mentor can really help uh, if you want to get to where you want to go a lot faster is having somebody offer some guidance and support and helping you you know, see what you need to do to get there. And that person can usually open a lot of doors for you as well. Yeah. And um, just as a last sentence, I found one of my mentors on Twitter. I followed his tweets and he did a lot of things I like, but I had no clue how to do them. And I try, uh, sent them a direct message, asked them, ask him if I could review my blogging to give me just a response back. And I was feeling like I'm struggling, wasn't sure how I can go further with not with the SEO part, but like with the like with the content. You might let that's in the flow, that's engaging, and that it sounds great because that's not where my ability is. And he really guided me since then, like like just being there for me. I mean, like not asking for payment or nothing, just being there for me. And it still amazes me. So now I give it back. When somebody approached me, then I help them the best way I can. And it's it's it just I think having having a uh, having a coach you can rely on, having a mentor who who guides you in their abilities, having this combination with with great courses, with great training, I really can see that makes a huge impact. Definitely. I totally agree. Okay.
Cool. So we're at the end of our show. I don't, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for spending an hour and 10 minutes with us. I didn't Thanks for inviting me, Dan Morris. It so long. It's been great getting to know you better. I love the program that, that you do here on Blab. Blab is a great platform I love for it. connecting with people. I think this is, I was doing Periscope. I was doing Meerkat. Then I switched to Periscope. And when Blab started, I was like, this is the best platform. I think this is the best live video platform yeah. out there. And if anybody's doing live video, they should be over here. I think Periscope is great and all, but I think, you know, talking about engaging and, you know, Periscope is, you know, you, you're just talking, like you're looking at yourself on your phone, like a selfie talking to yourself, even though people are there. I don't feel like it's as engaging. I feel like this is a much better way of engaging with people. Yeah, I totally love that. And I followed your advice. I tested it out, Periscope a few times. My challenge as a left brainer is if you leave me alone in a room, I become disconnected and I will just um, just spill out uh, information, resources, but I cannot, as a left brainer and logical person, this I need this platform to engage and to, to become more authentic, <laughs> to become real myself. So we will let loose a little bit and become more relaxed. Yeah. And that's why no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you now. So I do plop. I'm Periscope so far, just not for my personality. Yeah. Right. And it's not for everybody. You know, it's like yeah. for some people it's great, but I feel like this is a platform that can be more, you know, for everybody community. because there, you know, it works you know, exactly, totally community. Yeah. You know, that my blab about Twitter that I've been running now, I've been doing that since I think November now. And I'm building this great community over there just from the little weekly, you know, sharing Twitter tips and people love it. So I'm really enjoying that a lot. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. No, I love it too. So Madeline, thank you so much. I, I deeply appreciate all your tips and all your advice and all your your hard thoughts about how entrepreneurs can make money and can make a difference in the world. I think it's it's so important to to do both to to really create a bigger impact. So thank you so much for coming and being our guest. Do you do you have one last thing to share before we close up for today? Just thank you for you're having good. me. I really you're appreciate it. And what a <laughs> great group of people that were here chatting with us. And uh, if anybody needs any help, you know, I think uh, for those of you here that are really wowed by the Twitter card, I would love to have you come uh, join my class so I can, because like what you're saying, Dagmar, everybody can go and, and look it up and go figure it out. I can tell you this, it will take you like half a day to figure it all out because it's not easy. Um, but in but my class, I'm going to show you. It's, it's, I, yeah. the I can figure it out from a technical perspective. I'm not sure what should I, how should I name it? How should I approach it from a marketing perspective, from the words? Like technically I can figure out anything. It will just take me forever. But then do you and I know a call to action set up technically doesn't mean you're successful with this thing. A call to right. action needs to be everything. Absolutely. So it's a spiritual thing. At the end, it, it is really, it's, it's, what you need to catch, um, you need to catch somebody's intent, why they want to sign up and then present it, present your solution as the best solution for them. And then they will sign up. So now I'm, I'm getting at what you're saying. It's not a technical thing. It's really understanding the whole concept. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we're going to try to teach that in a one hour session so that everybody can at least see how the whole thing works and then they can go and set it up themselves. So that would be it's great. Be and, cool. and please, as soon as possible, because I really want to check it out. Awesome. As yeah, positive. it is. That's, some, that's <laughs> something that we're working on right now. So yes, it will happen very soon. Yeah. Awesome. So again, thank you so much, Madeline. For everybody else who joined and enjoyed the show this week, next week we will have Jessica Brace with us and she's a video marketing expert, very heart-centered, and she will share how she makes an impact and make money with video marketing. Thank you, and if you enjoy this recording, reach out to Madeline anytime, use her Twitter handle, use her blog, and just ask her the questions and she will help you in any way she can. She helped me a lot, made a huge difference for me in, in my Twitter business that I could create an impact and now I can make money with that. So I, I would love if you give Madeline the chance to, to help you making a difference. 
Thank you so much, Madeline. And thank you, everybody who's watching live. I really appreciate your time and your energy you put in here to make this show great. Thank you. Bye. Bye.